It's something Americans have been doing since the colonial days. Today it seems to be all the rage. Chicken keeping. From the backyards of San Francisco to New York high rises. One company is capitalizing on this trend, hatching new ideas as well as lots of eggs along the way. This is My Pet Chicken. Welcome to Bloomberg Enterprise, your exclusive look inside American businesses as they scale up. Literally a mom and pop operation, My Pet Chicken is run out of the Connecticut home of Tracy Torres and her husband Derek Sasaki. They originally set out to raise a few backyard chickens with their two daughters, but are now pioneers of a new form of retail. It used to be we get the response, you, know, you do what? Are you crazy? Are you right? Yeah. And now the response is either, oh, I have chickens or my neighbor has chickens, or I know someone who had chickens growing up. It isn't as tricky as a lot of people think. Cashing in on the growing popularity of backyard and urban farming, My Pet Chicken was founded in 2005. Last year, the company saw revenue reach $2 million, a growth of over 300% in just three years. Their success fed by a rising demand for homegrown groceries. Just Google chicken keeping and you'll come up with pages and pages of information. What's lacking? Hard data. The size of this market is difficult to ascertain. Uh, the USDA does not track these numbers. It's safe to say that it is a very, very small part of U.S. chicken production, which literally is in the hundreds and millions and billions of animals and eggs. You take a look at the growth in farmers' markets. You take a look even at some of the USDA's efforts in supporting roadside stands and alternative marketing models in agriculture, and this sort of fits within that stream. As far as hard numbers, there really have not been any big studies that have been done in this area. One place that is keeping track is the resource website BackyardChickens.com. It had 5,000 subscribers in 2000. Today, it's over 145,000. Why do you think backyard chicken raising this whole industry is kind of just getting more and more popular? I think there's so many reasons. Um, we've actually polled our customers to find out why they got involved with chickens because everybody has a different answer and different priorities. The number one most important factor to our customers is actually the personality of the chickens. They're so sociable, they're funny, they're quirky, they're kooky. Um, they come right up to you, they'll fall asleep on your lap. And I think that's actually the starting point for most people. People get chicken fever. You know, they start with one or two chickens and then suddenly they have to have the new fancy breed and the, the new bigger coop. One person with chicken fever investment advisor Hans Humes. When he's not helping restructure Greek debt, he along with his children are helping to tend to his four chickens and their coop. That's sort of different. It's like, you know, it's fun. I had two chickens when I was a kid and then about two years ago I was up in Palmo, Vermont at the state fair and my daughter started playing with these two chicks and she was saying, Dad, Dad, they're only 50 cents. My, my son Hank was like, no, we can't have them. I was like, I just I had chickens when I was a kid. So we bought a couple chickens that's one of them. And it just sort of happened. Um, I put a couple pictures on Facebook and my friend Derek. His friend Derek being the same Derek behind My Pet Chicken. And so I immediately, I said, Hans, why didn't you tell me? You know, I can set you up, I can help you out here. And it just started there, you know, one question, another question, and now and then I'm shipping him chicken food, and then he wants baby chicks. I'd say every couple weeks uh, we you know, converse about you know, chickens, or he uploads a new picture on Facebook. Tell me what you get out of it. Well, one, it's great for the kids. I mean, just doing something, having a project with that you work on with your kids, buy a couple chicks with your daughter. She and gets they're all really excited. involved, right? Yeah, 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 sure. And then with my son, he's very handy. So he and I planned out how to lay out the cages we had and then the add-ons and help build them. So what's it like to have chickens? Well, it's very useful and it is pretty cool. And as my dad says, it's a very good thing to bond on. <laughs> I didn't think we would be able to deal with having chickens and pets, especially in an apartment. Yeah. But, you know, we Seems made to it be work. Working. Uh -huh. It's less work than, than a dog or a cat, for sure. Um, and it's just something different. And also, like, dog or a cat, you don't have breakfast ready for you in the morning. Well, not that they cook their own eggs, but at least you have the eggs. I mean, I never buy eggs. So by now, you must be wondering, how do you get started? 
All right, so I'm on the phone. I'm Carol from New Jersey. I'm calling, and I say, I want to get a couple chicks. I want to start. Give me a ballpark figure of what it's going to cost me in total. In total, so uh, buying the chicks, uh, it will probably be anywhere from $12 to you know, $40 for the chicks. Uh, shipping is going to be $38. That's to get them shipped express mail, which is the fastest method so that they arrive uh, safely. And we actually we have a 100% live guarantee. So if one of the chicks uh, did not make it, we would refund you. Actually, if you, you buy our kit, the $80, that has a five pound bag of stir feed that will last you for a couple weeks. To get going, uh, you can be you know, a little over $100. Uh, the coop is the big cost. Did you know that chicks could be shipped? I mean, when you first started getting into this, you did you know, have any idea? Uh, we found out <laughs> online. Uh, the amazing thing is the U.S. Postal Service has been doing this for over 115 years. Do you guys think it's crazy that you're shipping chicks? <laughs> you're laughing, so it's a little crazy. It is kind of crazy. All right, so there's a box. Yep. If I lift it up. Sure, you can see. There's your chicks. We don't want them popping out. There's a little bit of straw. There's yet yeah, straw, uh, and depending on the number of chicks that are in there, and in the colder months, uh, we actually add a long-lasting heat packs. It's a lot of excitement for postal workers, and it gets preferential treatment as such because it's, um, it brings a lot of joy to people's and lives. And everyone wants to see them. Coming up, hatching out how it all started. We do not have Harvard Business School uh, degrees. It's just been so unexpected and so fast. It's just been sort of coping. Hatched a few years ago, my pet chicken continues to grow. So this is a little over a week, but you can already see feathers on, on her wing. Versus the other ones are still all just falls. Almost no feathers on this one. Are you surprised by your success? Every day we're surprised. When we first started the business, we were hoping to be a fun side business, you know, throw some extra money that we could have to, to do fun things with and it, every year it just seems to grow bigger and faster. Putting up $10,000 of their own money, Derek Sasaki and Tracy Torres started My Pet Chicken with a website in 2005. We initially had planned to branch out. We owned several domains. We owned My Pet Bee for beekeeping, My Pet Worm for vermicomposting, My Pet Bunny. And then we, we bought the domain My Urban Homestead, thinking that could sort of be the umbrella brand, sell the chicken, sell heirloom seeds. So we were initially thinking we would just create My Pet Chicken, and then we would march forward with these other brands, and My Pet Chicken has been really all-consuming. So, you know, we're, we're taking it one day at a time. Helping them get through the day are 19 part-time employees. We've hand-picked these people from around the country who work from their homes, who really know chickens and they're passionate about chickens. So they love working here and, you know, we love them. So I'd say that's actually one of our biggest points of pride, that we've created a fun environment where people love to work. And they do a lot of your customer service or what? Yes. They do customer service. They do back-end order fulfillment. We have one um, really great lady in North Carolina who actually is raising and breeding chickens for us. We have someone who is our a marketing specialist and does a lot with our social uh, media. So we're sort of thinking about hiring someone at the higher level to help us actually move forward in a bigger way. I don't know how much market analysis they did, but I mean, there, there's been this existing business of shipping chickens, you know, 25 at a time to people who want to start a business. Right. And sort of identifying that there's actually retail demand, that there are people in Brooklyn here who might want to buy two or three chickens. Do you, and just is have that surprising hobby. that there's actually demand? No, well, I mean, listen, I had a chicken when I was a kid, so I get it. And I know that my oldest son had friends who had chickens, chickens here as well. So, but, and there's not a lot of services to that segment of the market. Growth has been easy, but that's also been our biggest challenge because we simply did not prepare for this. You know, we do not have Harvard Business School degrees. We wrote a business plan, which was kind of a joke. I think our business plan culminated in us earning $150,000 revenue in a year. So um, it's just been so unexpected and so fast. It's just been sort of coping. How do we build the infrastructure in, in, in time to meet our customers' needs? Um, and that's the way it's been for the last several years. And now that growth is slowing a little bit, um, you know, we've got the infrastructure in place and we can start to really focus on move forward projects. So merchandising, that's a part of what you guys do. Not, not a big part, right. but part of what you do. What do you have? We've got a lot of great stuff. This is one of my personal favorites. This is a 
recycled canvas sail bag. We sell a lot of these like little little decals. We sell a lot of treats. We sell a bunch of these. Oh, that's adorable. It's a kitchen hanger. We sell hundreds of tin signs a month. This is the chicken diaper with a removable vinyl liner. We have these in so many different patterns and sizes. And chickens need diapers. When you keep them indoors, they oh, sure do. Yeah, do. Better than the mess. And then this guy, we sell so many of. We've sold well over a thousand of these little chicken purses and people just love to be seen toting their little chicken purse. You mentioned that you poll your customers. How often do you do that to kind of keep aware of what's going on in the business? We do about 10 times a year. A lot. You know, yeah, yeah. We want to know who these people are and what they're thinking and, and what's important to them. And, um, you know, they have fun participating in the polls too, but it gives us a sense of where we need to be moving. So it does kind of shape what you might do. Absolutely, but we have pulled our customers about the breeds, the up-and-coming breeds. We call them sort of designer crossbreeds, like a Labradoodle. Wow. Yeah. Like we have a breed that we will be selling in the coming months that lays an olive green egg, and it has a very unique feather pattern. This is a cream leg wire. This is one of the breeds we're most excited about. We just started selling their fertile hatching eggs. They lay uh, a nice sky blue egg. They have pretty great personalities. Um, and they're beautiful, and they've only been in this country for a few years. They're, they're a British breed. $120 a dozen. $120 a dozen, yeah. They are, they are high, very high end. And it might be hard for you to understand, but when chicken fever sets in, you have to have that one particular breed. There are these, all these great breeds that lay blue eggs, and none of the commercial hatcheries sell them. Real blue, sky blue eggs, but we'll be selling them in the coming months. Still to come, not everything is always easy in the hen house. We have failures every year. We fail in some pretty big ways every year. We were storing stuff in our, our barn garage here and uh, we actually had a, a big fire. Around the clock, around the world, Bloomberg keeps you connected on television, online, on the radio, and on mobile. Nothing is tougher on your car's floor than you. That's why there's WeatherTech Floor Liners. WeatherTech Floor Liners are laser measured to custom fit and perfectly protect your specific make and model. Front, back, even up the sides. Dirt and spills stay in the liner until you wash them away. Order your floor liners at SpillProofMats.com or call 1-800-99-SPILLPROOF. Complete protection, completely American made. Order your floor liners today at SpillProofMats.com. Your new business really needs new business. Get the word out with the HP Office Jet Pro. Professional color printing for 50% less per page than laser. Making an impact, it matters. Paris, St. Petersburg, Budapest, Beijing. Let Viking River Cruises show you the world. Remarkable voyages start at just under $1,800 per person. Unique shore excursions are included in every port. And on board, enjoy delicious meals plus wine with lunch and dinner. All this, and you only unpack once. Viking River Cruises, exploring the world in comfort. I believe you have to have a professional presentation at all times, even if you're covered head to toe dirt. That's just part of the profession. Every day, millions of business owners count on Vistaprint to professionally promote their business easily and affordably. I will never get a manicure, but there's no point, but I will always have good business cards. Visit Vistaprint.com to get 250 new and improved cards for only $10, plus free shipping. There's 250 potential sales right there. Vistaprint.com. What's been a surprise? in running this business? Um, failures. <laughs> we have failures every year. We fail in some pretty big ways every year. And it's both the failures and the fact that we, we, we're we still doing great. We're still growing. We're still thriving. One year, the, the uh, coops that were coming from China, there was miscommunication, and they delivered too many of them. And at that point, you can't say no. You know, you send them back. 
Uh, you own them. We own them, and we sat on forty thousand dollars of inventory in December, wow. which is you know one of our, our slowest months. And then there was the fire. We were storing stuff in our our barn garage here, and uh, we actually had a, a big fire. Oh. Yeah, that uh, thankfully the structure was uh, saved. We uh, you know, had to do some uh, renovation to it, but we lost all of our inventory, and it just. Did yeah. you have insurance? We had some insurance on it. It's uh, a funny. Uh, it shows you where this industry is. We would go to uh, insurance companies that work with farmers, and they'd say, y you sell chickens on the internet? We don't know how to cover the internet. You talk to an insurance company that does businesses and internet, and they say, you mail chickens? I don't know. We don't know <laughs> how to write this. Where's my file on that one? Exactly. You know, underwriting's not, you know, doesn't know how to, to label this one. The fire didn't break them, nor do potential challenges, like zoning laws. What about, like, zoning laws and legislation? Does any of that kind of trip you up or worry you about whether that's not going to get in the way? Not really. People uh, are, are lobbying their towns all over the country. Every week, it's like two or three or four different towns have gotten... Um, chickens approved. So the trend's going in the, in the right direction. Absolutely. And for every for four guys. that get approved, there's definitely one where folks are petitioning their town and showing up in chicken costumes at town hall meetings and they're getting denied. So, but the trend is definitely toward um, loosening up zoning laws around chickens. Certain cities are more progressive than others, it's just like they are with bike paths or any other sort of amenity there may be. I think the law in New York is that you have to keep them on a rooftop. <laughs> Technically, the terrace is a roof, Okay. Um, but this, this area is a lot more sheltered against the heat and the storms. All of them are girls, or else we would have a very bad wake-up call, and it's illegal to have roosters. You're right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Oh, Do you want me to put her down? Despite a lack of clarity in zoning, chicken keeping is part of the growing trend of urban farming and eating local and organic. It's a way for both city and country families to have fun and work together. What's it like working with your husband? <laughs> and I don't mean it's a bad thing, but it's it's yeah. a lot of time together sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. curious, like, what's, what's that like? Well, we worked for five years together in the stock photography business before we started this. So you were ready. So we are ready. But, you know, most people choose their partners because of their complementary sort of personality. So we definitely clash sometimes. Uh, but we balance one another out really well, uh, and that's the important thing. We've, we've got complementary skill sets and complementary personalities. Right. So, um, so it ends up working out. We definitely drive each other crazy sometimes, but that's okay. All, all I would say everybody does. Yeah. She has all these ideas, and I'm the one that's thinking, oh, how are we going to make that happen? You know, where are we going to get this and, and put all of this together? Being practical. Time. Someone <laughs> has to do it, I guess, right? Every company has someone like me and, and someone like Tracy, I think, uh, to be successful. I mean, what is the biggest misperception about chickens as an animal and, and raising chickens in your backyard? Mm -hmm. and that you need a rooster to lay eggs. <laughs> yeah. Up next, the chickens come home to roost in the form of profits. Really, in the past maybe six months, it's the first time in our life as a business that we have been able to say, OK, we've got money. What are we going to do? One of our big projects is in, I call it insourcing. I don't know if anyone else is using that term, but we have uh, chicken coops made in China, and we very much want to get them made in this country. Uh, it won't make us more profit, but we just feel it's the right thing to do. Insourcing might one day chip away at margins, but Tracy and Derek aren't worried. You've had pretty amazing growth, three-year growth of over 300%. You've got revenue for 2011, $2 million. Mm -hmm. These are pretty terrific numbers. Do you expect to see that kind of growth continuing? It's definitely slowing down. Margins are tough in our business. Yeah. Many, many people have come and filled the vacuum and come into the space um, offering products and services, but there's nobody doing exactly what we do. But we're still growing, and I feel like we're not even trying for it at this point. Does it worry you that growth is slowing, or you kind of, that's no good? No way, no way. I mean, last year we sold 80,000 chicks, and there are several big hatcheries around the country that sell 80,000 a week. 
So even if growth were to really slow down, there's so much market share out there for us to, to capture. How many customers do you guys have? We have about 50,000 customers. Wow. As you see growing affluence, not only in the U.S., but in developing economies and in Europe and other regions as well, you're going to see more companies like this on the horizon. And at this point, there's probably room in the marketplace for, for really many more than there are today. And that bodes well for growing revenues at My Pet Chicken. Like, what is, like, the cash flow like? Like, are you guys living from month to month? Or maybe was it like that and it's not so much? You know, it's only been the last, you know, two years or so that, uh, you know, our income has come in from the business. It's not month to month. Cash flow uh, is, hasn't been a huge problem. Uh, we have had some profits that we've uh, been investing. You're profitable enough that you both draw a salary. We both take a, a small salary from the business to help cover our you know, expenses at home. And then at the end of the year, we look at what profit there was and figure out where that needs to be reinvested in the company and then take some out for our own use. You know, in the past few months, we've, we've definitely started planning for the future. How are we going to invest our, our profits uh, for next year to keep growing and to be, keep becoming better? There's so many different ways we could take the business. And right now, I think what's preventing us from doing anything bigger is, is that we have a family. We have two little kids. That's the most important thing to us. You know, sure, we could take on some venture capital and grow in some amazing ways, but Derek and I are both involved in the business together. You know, how would we balance that with being home for them? Have you had investors or venture capitalists? No. Not yet. No. $10,000 and... That was it. But have you had people approach you saying, this is a great idea? We've had some people um, interested in buying us, yeah. You have? Yeah, and that, um, we've explored it, but um, ultimately, six, 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 six. we're pretty happy with what we've got. If we're gonna sell this, it's gotta be for a good chunk of money because we're loving what we're doing. The thing that strikes me talking to Tracy and you is for, for folks who are running a small business, which can be crazy, you seem really relaxed. You know, we, we've tried to stay very down to earth with it, and you know, I actually think keeping chickens, you know, helps with that too. You know, you can go outside, take a break, spend some time with the chickens, you know, feed them, pet them, and it definitely can uh, soothe a, a you know, tough day. Really, in the past maybe six months, it's the first time in our life as a business that we have been able to say, okay, we've got money. What are we going to do? What's next? What do we do next year? Right. Do you not want it to get? Too, too big? Oh no, bring you're, it on. You're okay? Bring it on, <laughs> yeah.